So today I have with me Henry Kastenskopf from the Bombay Flying Club. For those of you who don't know Bombay Flying Club, it is one of the Europeans' um, most prominent multimedia production houses. And we're here this week to talk about audio editing. So can I start by uh, asking you, Henry, just to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about the Bombay Flying Club and what you do. Yeah. Uh, yes, as you said, my name is Henrik. And, um, I'm a producer and photojournalist with the Bombay Flying Club. Uh, the Bombay Flying Club started out in 2005 at the Danish School of Photojournalism as a um, cooperation between myself and Paul Madsen. And uh, because we saw uh, an, or felt an urge to, to uh, go online with our stories because we saw that the the newspaper industry was dwindling, and we got we couldn't get the the space and the paper that we wanted for a photo reportage. And just next to it was all this internet lying around, and uh, we had we just saw this as a immense opportunity to tell the stories that we wanted to tell. Um, and then came a, a period of of uh, staffing. For, for both of for the both of us, and since two thousand and eight, we've been working uh, full time on Bombay Flying Club. And this week, we're here to talk about audio editing. So, specifically, what part does audio play in your production process? How how important is audio to the multimedia productions that you do? It's all important. Uh, it's the one part that you basically cannot do without. Um, you can have a story that goes on in the dark, basically. But if there's no if there's no audio as well, when the, well then there's nothing. Um, audio is a vital part of uh, web documentaries or multimedia storytelling. And if you do it bad, it's uh, you don't have any audience left. So it, it's really really important. It's often said that audio is more than 50% of the story. I mean, would you agree with that? It, it, it's the thing that drives the narrative, basically. Very much so, uh, and I do agree. Um, that's one of the really cool things about uh, audio for seen from the perspective of a, of a photojournalist, which is um, that if you do it well, nobody will notice and everybody will keep their focus on your beautiful imagery. Uh, but then again, if you do it bad, uh, everybody runs screaming for the, nearest, uh, for the nearest exit. And let's face it, it's really easy to run, ra run away from a story on the internet. So, so it's a win-win situation for a photojournalist, I think. I think. Uh, and what do you think are the key elements of strong storytelling with audio. I mean, what is it that you need to include in terms of your audio production workflow to, to really kind of make a story work? That's a bit more tricky because it depends on the story, um, first of all. Um, what makes great soundscape? Uh, well, it has several ele elements. Obviously, um, uh, the voice, the character, uh, the voice character is important. You can have, um, you know, have an expert interview, but if uh, the, the expert has a really uh, annoying voice, your audience will tend to, to get annoyed as well, and then they, they skip your, your story anyway. Voice quality, voice uh, character is a vital part. Um, obviously, we're dealing with journalism, so we, we do not cast people uh, to that extent. Uh, but having a critical approach towards the voice talent that you, you are having in, in your story, that's, uh, that's one thing. Another thing is um, audio gives you a sense of place. It, it places you in an environment. Uh, it places you uh, in a mood, and it, it places you in the storyline, so to speak. So, for instance, when we go out to shoot, we, have, we carry uh, three or four different kinds of, of microphones, depending 
on what kind of aspect we want to enhance uh, in that given in, in that given situation. Um, so that goes from a, uh, a binaural set of microphones where you get this uh, immersive surround uh, feeling, or a or dynamic microphone that will give you a really good close. Um, intimate feeling of, of a, a voice and that also goes for a set of stereo mics that just give you a general ambience. So we work in layers uh, when we sort of design the soundscape. But again we're dealing with journalism here so there's, there's a limit to what you can do. Um, and I notice on your website you have a picture of, of the standard gear that you bring with you. I, I'm not sure if that's just a generic picture or it's one that, that is representative of what you always bring. But, but in that picture, I would say probably half of the pieces of kit that you've got are all to do with collecting audio. Um, and, and, and this is to produce this kind of all immersive, as you said, these sort of different types of sounds that you want to put together and bring together into the audio editing system. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about your workflow? How, how you sort of start with the audio gathering during production, how you organize the audio when you come back, and then how you edit. Um, what part does the audio editing come in the overall video production? Uh, well, to begin with the first question, um, at an early stage, uh, based on the research that we've done, um, we try to sit out uh, and figure out what are the sort of emblematic pieces of audio that we need for this story. What does it sound like? I mean, this, this is doing, uh, doing it at back at the office table. So this is purely, uh, you know, like Ansel, Adam, Ansel Adams, uh, when he was, uh, you know, pre-visualizing his story, his, uh, his photography, we are sort of pre-audioizing our stories. What kind of audio comes into mind if, if we're going to, recently we went to, uh, to Liberia to do a story about um, lack of access to energy. And uh, what came out of the research was that everybody uses uh, generate, personal generators because um, they don't have a functioning electrical grid that covers the entire country. So the sound of these generators was one thing. Uh, the, um, the other aspect is uh, when the generator stops, the silence, what does that silence actually sound like? Because that's another thing, there's no such thing as absence of sound. There's always sound around us. And the second that you make sort of a gap in your soundscape where there's no audio in information, that's just nothing. And it will be perceived by your, your audience as, uh, as a major uh, error. And immediately your audience attention goes down into that hole and, and you've lost them again. So, um, so that sound, See? back to Liberia, that, the kind of lack of audio, what does that sound like? Right, so, so you're, you're making a list, like, like you make a shot list of, of the key images you want, you're also making a list of what are the key audio sounds that you want to record as well. Yeah. And uh, very often when, when we, we touch ground in... in in the, the country that we're going to, well, everything changes because reality doesn't add up to, to what we had uh, imagined on the table uh, back at the office. And then you just adapt. Um, but that's, uh, that's the approach, basically, that we pre-visualize it and we uh, make a shop list and we go out looking for if whether our research uh, had anything to do with reality, <laughs> so to speak. And, uh, and then we just start recording. And then um, another really useful tip, especially for, uh, for a photojournalist, is to just to close your eyes, use your ears. Okay, we're gonna come on to the tips in a minute. Can you just tell us a little bit more ab about the, you know, the second stage? So you, you've gone to Liberia, you, you've shot your project, you recorded the audio. When you come back, how do you organize that into you know, something that you can then turn into a project? And then what are the stages of editing that enables you to um, build the story bit by bit? And, and where does audio come into that flow? Um, 
for my part, uh, I edit in Final Cut 10 uh, when I do the videos, and um, and to the extent that I've done my my job reasonably reasonably well, um, I can use 90% of the of the audio pieces that I have directly in the timeline, and. Um, and then I just build it progressively, uh, sequence by sequence. And in the end, when the final story is done, I'm going uh, to a um, to a sound facility and get a post production done for it. So everything just uh, I set perfectly in in terms of levels and clarity and all that kind of thing. So you're using an outside company to do that, or you're you're going into a different software program to do that? I do. Um, as I said, I do most, most of it in, uh, in Final Cut 10, but then I, I export the, the final um, audio uh, track and then get that one enhanced. Okay. And for professional, th this course is dealing specifically with professional photojournalists who are looking to move into multimedia. What do you think are the key challenges for them in terms of audio, um, particularly in terms of audio editing? Um, because this is, a, this is something completely new to them. They may have some kind of basic understandings of how video might work, but audio is, is, is a completely new field for them. What are, what are the main challenges and what is, is your advice to them as they set off in this new field? The best one is start using your ears. As a photojournalist, we have an obvious uh, visual preference and a visual talent, which uh, basically means that we don't use our ears as much as we should be. There's a lot of information that you can provide in a story that you don't have to show, but you, you can just tell in terms of, of audio, um, whether that just being detail sounds or the overall ambience or or the voice of, of the interview person. Um, so first of all, start using your ears. Uh, what I do when I, when I go into a new, uh, a new scene or something like that, uh, before starting recording, I, I actually go in there and stand there quietly with my eyes closed and start listening to the place. And being a photojournalist, that sort of freaks me out always, and I still do, uh, even you know, almost 10 years on. Um, because that's not the way that I usually navigate the world. Um, but I stand there with my eyes closed and start listening to the room. And, and once I get this feeling of it, uh, then I start, okay, I can sort of discern what microphones I need to use and, and so on and so on. Um, don't be afraid of audio because there's almost a one-to-one -one correspondence between uh, visuals and audio. Uh, your recorder is your camera, your microphone or your lens and uh, so it's it's actually fairly easy to make that uh, transition from video to uh, from visuals to audio. Uh, it's just a matter of, of sort of the way that you look at it. And during this conversation, you, you've, you've given us a lot of tips, um, but we ask normally at the end of this to give sort of one final tip. What is the one thing that you would say to every photojournalist, the one tip that would help them in improving their audio editing? Bad audio kills great photography. That's great. Straight to the point. <laughs> And very important for photojournalists as well, because obviously um, they don't want to have their <coughs> photographs interrupted by uh, something that's going to take people away. Because I think you're right. I mean, it, the audio is what is going to engage um, the person who's, who's seeing the piece. And, and, and if they don't see good audio, if they don't hear good audio, um, they'll soon become disinterested, even if the photography is really good. Yeah, absolutely. It freaks people out. Uh, Sorry. Uh, just, just to add a small point, the really cool thing about it is that if the audio works, nobody will notice it and everybody will focus on the photography. It's a win-win. Really, really good point. Henrik, thank you so much for your time. I, I'd recommend anyone who's watching this who hasn't seen the work of the Bombay Flying Club to go over to their website, which I think is bombayfc.com, is that right? True. Henrik? Yep. Yeah. 
um, and have a look at some of their projects and the stuff they're doing. It's some really interesting stuff. Thank you so much for your time. It's a pleasure being here.